And we're live. But not. All right, before we start, I gotta ask you one thing. Do you know why I pulled you over, ma'am? It's gonna make a bad joke. <laughs> All right, let's do it. These glasses are nice. There's definition of nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. You ready? Yeah. You got your sillies out? Hey everybody. Hello. Welcome to another Kill Be Life video that I am taking over today. <laughs> I'm in charge. Anyway, I was going through uh, comments and realize there were a lot of things that were coming up over and over again from people that are maybe new mm. subscribers or haven't followed your whole journey. And so I made a list of questions that would just kind of catch people up to where we're at now and hopefully be a good reference point maybe for people that are new to this or want more information about who awesome. you are and why you're talking about it. So I just gotta sit here and answer questions. You just, he hasn't even seen the questions yet. <laughs> yeah. We'll see how this goes. But before I said I don't want them. He, yeah, he wouldn't. Yeah, that's okay. Um, but before we start, we do want to thank Element for sponsoring this video. We're going to talk about them in a little bit. You ready? Yes. Let's Rapid do this. fire. Okay. Okay, not really. <laughs> so tell me why you went on the carnivore diet to start with. Because you were saying that I was just kidding. <laughs> that is not true. Well, my main, the, the last catalyst was finding out I had type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. And I knew that was not something you want to mess around with. I already had hypertension, I was already obese. But the diabetes, for some reason, that hit me hard. Yeah. I just knew I had to do something. How long have you been on it? <laughs> 25 minutes. No. Almost 13 months. Almost 13 months. It's coming up fast. Yeah, three days. About three days, it'll be 13 months. That's crazy. What does your normal workout schedule look like? You mean, how often do I work out? How often and like what intensity maybe? I, I work out Monday through Friday. I try to run at least a mile and a half or walk if I'm mm -hmm. feeling tired. That's <laughs> fair. Yeah. And then I do benches, lat work, bicep work, and I'm supposed to do ab work at night that I keep forgetting to do. And the, intes the intensity depends on the day. Yeah. But my goal is always to do it to fail. Three, like three sets of reps of each. Oh, and my squats, which helps my mobility. That's true. That, that, that has been, besides the strength, the squats have really helped my mobility. I feel like a spring chicken with springs. There you go. Do you fast? What does that look like for you? I do. I intermittent fast five days a week. And so that's my current schedule, intermittent fasting five days a week. So I try to eat my last meal about six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Like today, I have my last meal at eight o'clock because we had dog training. Mm -hmm. But then I try not to eat until two, three o'clock. Try not to eat lunch until two, three o'clock. Yes. And I'm not sure the exact math on that, but. We could figure it out, but that's From okay. six o'clock to two o'clock, what is that? Yeah, so. Yeah, so it's probably 19 hours by the time you've actually eaten at 6 o'clock. Yeah, so 16 to 18 to 20 hours. 16 minimum, typically. Do you feel like it's easy to do most days? Most days, it's no problem. Sometimes I get hungry. Yeah. And that's because I'm getting up and then working out mm -hmm. and then going to work. And some days I'm in my job, I'm doing like over 20,000 steps. Yeah. Yeah, he'll come home and show Moving you furniture. It's crazy. Do you still drink coffee? I gave up coffee and then I started adding back in a little bit of coffee. Because a little bit in the morning after my salted water has been really nice in my workouts. <laughs> so tell me more about your salted water. So I salt my water in the morning. So what I do is I get a coffee cup full of water mm -hmm. and I take that coffee cup and I put it in the microwave for two minutes, get it hot. I put, I don't know, four grams of salt in there depending on the day, a salt in my coffee cup and stir it up. And I use Redmond's Real Salt. Mm -hmm. And currently I've been using Redmond's Real Salt that I smoke myself. I know the regular salt is just fine. They have smoked salt that I haven't tried, which is probably better than the one I smoked. <laughs> but I like that smoky flavor first thing in the morning. And yeah. if like, if you're trying to kick like coffee addiction or cut down on it, yes. my go-to is still the salted water because I'm just trying to make sure that I stay, have electrolytes going, you know, in my mm -hmm. body when I go out the exercise. I like it. Um, do you take supplements? Yes and no. So intrigue. I try not. To, <laughs> I try not to supplement, but then I've been experimenting over this last winter with vitamin D, mm -hmm. and then I got like a. I guess I could have brought them, but it was like. But you didn't know what the questions were. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like a calcium, vitamin D1, just that calcium and vitamin D. I was taking iodine just because I heard mm -hmm. you might need iodine. But I implemented uh, Fish Fridays that kind of just automatically make it so I might not need to supplement. 
Sure. Uh, obviously the salt, salted water mm -hmm. to start off my day. I will drink the unflavored element. One, I'll take one of those with me to work. Mm -hmm. I'll try some of that on the week, like a flavored versions on the weekend. So I try not to, I give myself a little space here, but not like too much. Yes. I keep a pretty good routine. I tried that niacin. Yeah, that was weird. That was a little um, crazy. I just bought another one that I can't remember the name of it. Calmag Citrate. Yes. Which I was recommended by a viewer. You know who you are. You know who you are. Toots. Toots. GS Mothers. I'm not sure how you even pronounce that. But I've been taking that, but I, it's like you're supposed to take six. I'll take one because it hurts my stomach. Yeah. And why am I taking that? It's because it was recommended to me and I'm trying it out. Because you were told to. Well, I just find that there is some wisdom on the internet. Do yes. I need the supplements? I don't know. Maybe. Just depends. Yeah, and I think you research them so you're not taking anything that is detrimental. Mm -hmm. So do they help? We'll see. Yeah. But they're certainly not hurting anything. Correct. So while we're on supplements, let's talk about Element for mm -hmm. another minute. Okay. So Element has been partnering with us and sponsoring some of our videos. Mm -hmm. And I'm super excited about it because it's a product that we use and mm -hmm. buy ourselves. So we're willing to spend our own money on and it gives us the opportunity to share it with you and i'm very excited about that yes so element is a tasty electrolyte drink that has all the stuff you want and none of the junk it has a thousand milligrams of sodium 200 milligrams of potassium and 60 milligrams of magnesium yes and i was thinking about this today mm -hmm. because i like the raspberry and the watermelon those are my go-to but we have probably all by now heard how terrible red dyes are and okay. those are both like red flavors if you will mm -hmm. and so i was thinking about that just today like how it's awesome to have an alternative that cuts out something that we know is junk yeah and so element i like i was saying i use the unflavored version during the week mm -hmm. and then i get, i've been giving myself some treats on the weekends and it's nice because it's good for a paleo diet like keto diets mm -hmm. carnivore diets i love that these packets are so small and easy to use that i can take them with me when we go on hikes or when we're out with the kids, they fit easy in my purse, dump them right into a water bottle, they mix up easily. They're great for pre-workout, post-workout, anytime you feel like you just need a little bit of a boost. Just go to drinkelement.com slash Kilby and you can claim your free sample pack with eight flavors and you can try them all and you can share them with a salty friend. Hey! Hey! Are you drinking and driving with that element? Legally, yes I am. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay, so here's another question that I see all the time. Are you ready? Have you ever heard of Dr. Ken Berry? No, is he like one of those YouTube gurus? <laughs> yes, I've heard of Dr. Ken Berry. Let's just clear the air. You yeah. should listen to him. Yeah. And when I come out with a video with a question or something I'm wrestling through, he comes out with the video with the answer that exact day, so. Almost every time, Yeah, we're, we're probably like besties Probably. and we don't even realize it. <laughs> I just think that one's funny. What kind of research did you do before starting the carnivore diet? Very little. Okay. Just just throughout life you kind of hear about low carb diets mm -hmm. and you should get off the carbs and the sugars. Yeah. You get, it, it's like Atkins diet. Uh, what was the other one? Just low carb diet. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the name of another one. But yeah. yeah. So the, the carbs and the sugars I've heard my dad talk about you just got to get off the carbs and sugars, you go to the Wendy's, no bun please, mm -hmm. and just, just eat all the, everything but the carbs. And so I thought that was the way to go inherently. And then I heard about keto, which we tried, which I've always failed in because there was too many, there's too many, the limits were too much. Yeah, I yeah. feel like it's worked well for me, but was it? It was like too easy just well to go to the Chipotle and get mounds and mounds of everything that was keto. And so when I heard about the carnivore diet, you know, just on YouTube, mm -hmm. Dr. Jordan Peterson talking about it, and I was like, okay, well, this seems extreme. Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Because <laughs> we do nothing if it's not extreme. Well, I mean, I felt like... <laughs> Let's have eight kids. I like meat. I like eating meat. Yeah. That was always the go-to anyway. Mm -hmm. Protein, the meat was always the, is the go-to and the main of any of the meals anyway. Right. So why... Why not just try to just eat just meat? I mean, I couldn't even say the word carnivore at the beginning. It was so weird to me. Yeah. Yeah, you I, animal based diets or something. Maybe derogatory. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hurt people's feelings. I mean, because I've done pastoral work for a long time, I just try to make sure that 
I'm not like losing the right to talk to people and sure. carnivore just seem now it's now I don't care for the most That's part legitimate. I don't I don't want to just be a, aggressive but get off the carbs and the sugars yeah so what do you do when you're wrestling through like bad news or bad labs or difficult health related things like how do you handle that especially since there's a lot of, see, I told you so kind of stuff still surrounding carnivore. I battle it through, I, you know, me getting up early, you know, and working out. Like, I get up, I read my Bible, I read uh, parenting books, yep. I'm reading self-help books, you know, Christian self-help books for people at work and just different things. Like, I'm, so I'm a, I'm a student of a lot of things and I'm also a student of you know the medical stuff mm -hmm. right now when it comes to you know up-to-date medical how should i say i'm a student of the diet but yeah. i just think it's good and wise to be a student of all these things yes. and and try not to get too dug in i try not to get advice. too dug in on anything because ultimately as a christian man i i'm trying to look for god for divine sanction when it comes to it and like i wrestle with those things and so yeah it's fun we're learning as we go yeah speaking of learning um can you recommend two or three books that you've read that have been really helpful for you yes i would say lies my doctor told me mm -hmm. by dr ken berry so the carnivore cure by judy cho mm -hmm. and ultimate ketogenic fitness by bronson dant yes. which is uh, a, just a coach that I've met on the internet and he mm -hmm. was giving me some insight. So I really like that book because it teaches you about fitness and working out and find your why. And and uh, I need to follow some of the advice by getting like personal trainers and going to the gym, but my time hasn't allotted for that yet. I have no One complaints day. about what? your muscles. You can leave that in yeah. there. So that's a good point. Yeah, you've also got another stack on the shelf inside that you're working through and getting to. Uh, so. Yeah, the salt fix. And I still haven't even finished the Carnivore Diet by Dr. Sean Baker. Yeah, just I'm thinking about buying that new book that Dr. Ken Berry just came out with called Kicking Ass After 50. I'm not even 45 yet, but I got some people that need to start learning how to kick ass. That's for my kids when they watch this. Okay, do you check your blood sugar and blood pressure at home? Rarely. Okay. So I was checking my blood pressure more often, but then, I, but then it regulated. Right. And then every once in a while I would check it when I thought it might be a little bit high, and even then it wasn't high. Right. So I'm like, okay. And then I started going to the doctor and then I get to be high at the doctor. And then the last doctor I went to, they used like a manual one and they're like, it's perfect. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And they did it over my shirt wrong anyway, because <laughs> Dr. Ken Berry taught me that too. And my blood sugar, I check it every once in a while, but I feel like I don't have to anymore because I'm not eating the carbs and the sugars. Sure. So it's, it's pointless. Every once in a while, I just check it in the morning to see where I'm at with the Dawn Phenomenon. And I think it's like 107 one time right. and I saw one that was 99 and I'm like, okay, I'm doing pretty good. Yes. It, Cause when I first started, it was up in the one thirties. Yeah. Yeah. It's really come down a lot. <clears throat> yeah. Is there anything you know now that you wish you had known starting this? I mean, that could probably be a whole video in and of itself. That's a whole but... video in itself. But I guess the one thing I thought I was getting old, but I was getting sick. And I was changing oil on the work truck today. I was jumping up and down from the ground to get back up. And I was yeah. like, dude, you know, I was like, you notice what's happening? You got mobility. Yeah. Which, I mean, that is not even an exaggeration. A year mm -hmm. ago, that wouldn't have been possible. Yeah. It would have been a much bigger endeavor. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that, that one for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All the things that we want to blame on old age that is really our body needing some Correct. attention. Sure. Okay, so then I have seen a lot about the BBBE and uh -huh. the lion diets. Mm -hmm. Is there any benefit to doing one of those instead of just straight carnivore? I mean, I would say obviously the lion diet, is rudiment meat, salt, water, that's it. Mm -hmm. Rudiment meat, like. Ruminant. Ru yeah, I always say that wrong. <laughs> ruminant meat, sorry. That's how we say it out west. No, I have no idea. Beef, venison, that kind of stuff, lamb. The benefit to that is that it's an elim the ultimate elimination mm -hmm. diet. So if you have a lot of like inflammatory or autoimmune disorders, that's what you would go to. Yeah. The BBE challenge, ba beef, butter, bacon, and egg challenge is just a, that cuts out dairy. So that's good because that's really inflammatory and causes a lot of problems for people. But it's also completely satiating and just si yeah. it's simple. 
Yeah. It's simple. Lion diet is simple, simple, simple. BBBE is simple. And, it, and I, they're both good for a reset. Yes. Like than just carnivore. But you're just gonna learn over time that, at least I have that like, I eat lion diet most of the time. Right. At least 80%. Fish Fridays, cause it's just, that's the go-to. Just had some hamburger for right. dinner. <laughs> What I have for lunch, I had some beef hot dogs that I found that were clean. There you go. Why? Because I guess I like tube steak. <laughs> it was just randomly. Yeah. I saw them, they were clean, and I'm like, okay, I'll try that. I think some variation sometimes is nice. Yeah, with some pork rind, so that's not lion diet. That's okay, well, that's fine. 20%. <laughs> um, why won't you take a statin or blood pressure medications? Well, there's... Uh, Currently, I mean, I guess that could always change. So I don't want to word that like you're never going to, but like, what is your outlook on it right now? I don't need blood pressure medication because right. my blood pressure is fine. If I was on blood pressure medication, I would probably pass out and die. Right. Hit my head or something. Yeah. I don't need it. So you've healed your body enough that that one has kind of fallen off Correct. the radar anyway. I don't need the blood pressure medication. All right. And when it comes to the statin drugs, if you actually look at the side effects of it, it's like diabetes mm -hmm. and... Uh, potential Alzheimer's, dementia, and just all, it is it is crazy. And so I personally think, and from being a student of, you know, cholesterol and lipid panels right. and all those things and like up-to-date information that people are coming out with, not just like old information right. that's bought and paid for by those drug companies, not to get like a conspiracy sound person. But, but, but it's, it's ridiculous because yeah. they just focus only on LDL. They don't uh, they don't focus on particle size, right? Which, Take the stat and continue your horrible diet. Which you've done a whole video yes. on that specifically. So as he's throwing out terms here, if you don't know what he's talking about, we'll put a link to that video. Maybe. Maybe if we remember. It's on the playlist. But the statin drugs lower the LDL, which if I'm not eating carbs and sugars, I shouldn't have a problem. That makes sense. And there's actually plenty of studies that say that high cholesterol levels lead to longer life. Right. Yeah. And I mean, there's plenty of tests that you can look into to find out more about yes. what kind of cholesterol. Particle size tests. Perfect. So I got rid of my blood pressure medication because I don't have high blood pressure. I don't, I didn't need diabetes medication because I don't have diabetes, right? I'm exercising all the time and the only marker of potential bad health I have is high LDL cholesterol. Even though my HDL cholesterol, a good one, is getting higher. My true glycerides are going down. Every other marker is great except for this one marker and I still need the drugs. I am healthier than my doctor. And yeah. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just saying I'm in better shape than them. Right. That has to mean something. That has to mean something. So you did an entire month when you were doing the lion diet mm -hmm. of daily vlogs and what you were eating. Mm -hmm. But right now, what does a normal day of eating look like for you? You know, Monday through Friday, no breakfast. Except for on, I give myself the every seventh week off. Mm -hmm. So I work out six weeks and seventh week off. And so this morning I had three eggs. Nope, four eggs. And what else did I have? Oh, chicken. I had some chicken, some chicken thigh, chicken liver, liver, and bacon. liver, bacon, like lunch meat that I made. That was kind of weird. I'm experimenting with stuff on videos and I ate that. It was okay. But my typical day would be no breakfast, lunch. I would have either a steak, about a pound, maybe some salmon on Fridays. Yeah, maybe okay, some eggs if I feel like it. And then for dinner, like uh, the same, usually yeah. about a pound of meat, maybe a pound and a half if I'm really hungry. And Wednesday nights on date nights, I keep making this giant ribeyes every Not Wednesday. Not complaining. <laughs> There's no complaints over here. So that's what I'm saying, mostly lion diet. Yeah. I have added a little bit of seasonings on there, the garlic, mm -hmm. garlic powder and stuff like that just because I feel like I can. I don't yeah. have like the problems with it. I could have a little bit of seasoning and have no you know, no ill effects. And I think it's interesting because you've been on it long enough that you can start to add things back in and tell yeah. fairly quickly if they are problematic for you or not. Like cheese. Like cheese. Yeah, I keep trying to add it back in and then I, my arthritis stuff, my joint pain always flares up. Yes. Especially if I eat like a cheddar, even like non-dyed cheddar you know mm -hmm. white cheddar every time 
cream cheese, not as bad. Right. So what does, I, I think a lot of people when they think carnivore diet, they think, oh my goodness, you're just eating these $12.99 a pound steaks and you must be mm -hmm. paying a fortune. Mm -hmm. What is, what, like, if you could break it down into a day or a week, what do you think your cost is? I mean, on the high end, 20 bucks a day. That would be two pounds of $10 a pound meat. Right. On a high, on a high day. And with eggs, we buy a lot in bulk for the kids. We're eating of tons eggs. of eggs. I don't eat too many eggs. Every once in a while, it sounds good. Yeah. I like the runny yolks on the on the hamburger. But then I, 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 I've been eating a lot of smash burgers because that supplements some of the... Yes. So I can eat a pound of hamburger for fine, legitimately for three ninety nine mm -hmm. all the time. So that's four bucks. Right. And if I only eat hamburger that day, it's eight bucks. So it's half the price. So I would say legitimately probably 10 to $20 a day and probably an average over a month, 15 bucks a day. Which I don't think, I think for most people is not nearly as high as they were probably thinking. Well, and I'm six foot four in general. I need a lot. And I guess I could show you this. Intrigue. <laughs> oh. And the, so this is, this is a way that I'm kind of trying to save some money, even though this is, this is a, a whole entire chuck roll. Yes, yeah, hundred dollars. This is twenty pounds of meat, but it's a whole chuck roll that I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna eat this so I can grind some of it. I can put it in the steaks. I'm gonna work on that. And it was five eighteen a pound, which is the exact price for the chuck at the store. Which, if I should have bought this in bulk, they should have gave me a discount. Yes. But five bucks a pound, twenty pounds. So this should only last me ten days. No, it'll last me more than ten days. Yeah. It probably lost me 15 days for sure. So, for sure. So, Unless he shares. I could eat two of these a month. It's like a baby. And you know, that's, that's, you know, that's a couple hundred bucks, but I'm not drinking Red Bulls. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of costs that people would end up cutting out that would easily make up the difference. Welcome back. Yeah, we should have did this live. <laughs> Actually, people have been asking me when we're doing another live, so we should probably get that on the schedule. Yeah, well, we keep trying to do it, but my wife works from home later at night. We got yes. a bunch of kids, so I'm, I want to. Yeah, we're, our dog training is almost over, so. Yes. But we can't do it when Dr. Ken Berry's having a live. How much weight have you lost total? The most I've seen, it was still a little over 50 pounds. And so I've been fluctuating. I yeah. fluctuate about eight pounds, in a, you know, up and down, depending on the day. And the moon. And the moon. But I'm at a place <laughs> that I'm not worried about weight loss anymore. Yeah. Because I'm not really, because I know I'm gaining muscle too. Right. But my body comp is just changing. Yes. And I know if I want to lose some weight, I could. I could just go online and diet again and within 30 days, you know, lose another 10 pounds. I should do a lion diet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she should try lion diet. One million likes on this video. No. My wife will have to I need one. more than one. What are favorite tools or favorite favorite ways to cook meat? Maybe favorite tools. What are some things that you've incorporated? So sous vide machine has saved my life. Yes. Because I could just throw a bunch of like I could throw a bunch of stuff in there and just mm -hmm. forget it. And that's it. I got all my meat at 130 degrees and that's that. Yeah, that is been a game changer for yes. me. I mean, I've always liked the grill stuff, pan, do stuff in pans, but I got that new flat top grill. Yes. So I, I'm loving that. I'm loving experimenting out there. I see myself outside a lot in the heat, cooking and slaving over this hot dog. Again, grill. no complaints. With Wagyu flat fat, just <laughs> and bacon fat, just burning my, my bare chest. Why you have your shirt off in this imagination of yours? Because it's, okay. it's very hot, <laughs> very sweaty. I need a minute. <laughs> Put these on. Oh goodness. Do you feel like carnivore is more restrictive than calorie counting or traditional weight loss diets? Traditional. No, absolutely yeah. not. I thought it was going to be, but counting calories is is ridiculous. I mean, unless you like math. And, I mean, I like counting my stairs just because of my OCD when I go up and down. But counting calories is a, I don't like it. Yeah. That being said, I did try calorie counting. The carnivore diet is way easier because you just, you start learning about your body, your hunger. I'm hungry, right. I'm going to eat. And what are you gonna eat? You're gonna eat beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, eat a steak until comfortably full. Right. And then you stop eating. Well, I think that's interesting too, because when you're calorie counting, at least in my experience, mm -hmm. I'll eat a meal and not be full. And then I'm just thinking about food all the time. Whereas when I did carnivore, mm -hmm. I could eat a meal and I was like, you know, I'm good. Yeah. Until the next time I ate, like, 
you know, did I still have cravings? Sure, especially at the beginning, but at not like beginning. I need to eat because I am hungry. Yeah. Like there was none of that. Are there? We talked about cheese, but are there any other foods that you tried to add back in mm -hmm. after being on this carnivore journey mm -hmm. that are not working well for you, even if they're permissible? I'm trying to think, that's a tough one. I, I find that I don't like chicken that much anymore. Yeah. It's just not that great. So other than cheese though, you haven't found anything that you eat it and you're like, oh my goodness, that's not okay. I do. Find sometimes if I eat too much hamburger, I don't feel that well. Okay. I don't get that way with steak. There's something about like the hamburger itself. If I I gotta be careful eating too much hamburger. Yeah. What has been the most frustrating thing that you've encountered doing carnivore? The hard, but the most frustrating thing for me is being in a position where in my real life, where I've done a bunch of hard work for the last year, put it on YouTube. There's like visible change in my life. People have noticed it. Right. But then I hear people talk about like going, they're going on diets and you're going to do this and that. But then they never ask me questions about what I'm doing because maybe it's too restrictive. Maybe it's just weird in person. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of frustrating or I see people that are complaining constantly about their health and that, and I'm like, like, what do you eat? And it's like, well, this, this is like, maybe cut out this, you know, there's like one little step and it's like, Oh, absolutely not. You know, I'd just rather complain about it. Right. And I mean, I'm not sure if that's the way you want me to answer this question, but that's my most frustrating thing. Sure. Well, that's what we're going for. Because I'm not trying to be a psychopath, you know, like say you need to do this, right. you need to do this, but if you're complaining about it or if you already have some kind of conviction that you need to do something about your health and you literally watch, just watch me do it. Like you're part of my life. I see you every week or every day and you, you're not doing anything. It's frustrating to me, but I still love you and I still care about yeah. you. Okay, I only have two more questions. Okay, yeah, because I'm running out of time here. I got more people to pull over, ma'am. Okay, what has been the most encouraging part of your carnivore journey, other than your personal health changes? I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is that I, I get messages all the time saying, you know, you're part of the reason that I'm trying this. Right. And that, you know, that's really encouraging. Yeah. Um, I honestly feel like I need that more. <laughs> because, yeah, because we're building a community. And I think yeah. that's, that's the fun part. And for me, reading comments of people that are like, I'm starting. And then you see a month later, hey, I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, those kinds of things. Yeah. I like keeping up with people mm -hmm. on their journeys. I mean, I feel like I just, I'm just, I feel like I'm just starting the run and become someone that has enough experience to help people. Sure. So that leads me to our last question. Mm -hmm. Where can people find you mm -hmm. other than on YouTube? Well, I live at... No, <laughs> not what I meant. Where can people find you on the internet? Well, um, <laughs> so the Kilby Life, this is the channel you're on, so that's easy. You can yep. go to thekilbylife.com is our website, mm -hmm. and we have like our favorite products on there. Yeah, like an Amazon store. Just a little bit about us. Mm -hmm. I have uh, a link to my coaching. So I'm doing uh, coaching through Revero, Dr. Sean Baker's platform, mm -hmm. carnivore.diet. So I have all my links on there and that's the best way to get a hold of us as our email addresses yeah. if you need to contact us directly. And so that's exciting. It is exciting because I think too, we try to read all the comments. We try yeah. to respond to as many of them as I'm we can. I'm way behind. I'm We're sorry. very behind. I mean, sometimes we can get pretty caught up and then a video kind of takes off and sets us back again, but mm -hmm. uh, definitely try and read those, but you know, email for yeah. now works too. <laughs> and, and, like it's overwhelming. And sorry, I'm 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 trying to get to I got a couple emails I need to respond to also. Yeah. And some of them like I can't just respond right out of the way because I gotta think about these things. Yeah, because I and I think I think that kind of goes, you know, the element thing and we try to be very authentic in what we're doing and so we don't want to give like like you were saying earlier, if you say, Hey I'm gonna watch the video, like we're really gonna go watch yeah. the video. And so with a lot of input it takes us time just to keep up with that, but we are trying. Yeah, I even learned about blue zones. And hell, it's all, all that data is crap. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Just want to thank everyone for watching this Kilby Live video. Kilby out.